So the ROCS Spring Major has just ended, and nothing makes me more motivated to play Rocket League than seeing the best of the best play against each other. We get to see insane mechanics, incredible goals, and just raw emotion and passion for Rocket League. And with Worlds just around the corner, my motivation to play and improve is at an all time high, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. So in this video, I'll be going through what I believe are the best ways to improve in Rocket League, Workshop Maps. Workshop maps are revolutionary to Rocket League. In the past, the only way to improve was free play and training packs. And I definitely still advise you to use both of these methods to improve, but workshop maps help you isolate what I call raw mechanics. These are the basic core mechanics of the game that give you an overall understanding of the way your car moves. These are things like ground car control, aerial car control, and just overall ball control. And then these go into different subcategories like drift control, aerial control, dribbling, and stuff like that. And workshop maps do the best job of helping you really focus on either of these raw mechanics. And I think these, combined with free play, are the quickest way to improve when not playing ranks. So today, I'm going to be going through the best workshop maps that will skyrocket your mechanics in Rocket League. There are four different workshop maps that focus on four important aspects of the game that I think everyone should use, and they can be of help from bronze all the way to SSL and even the pro level. So the first map I'm going to be showing you is Aim Trainer by Coco. This is literally like an aim labs for Rocket League. All you have to do is shoot the ball at the green squares. This helps with one of the most important, if not the most important aspects of the game, accuracy. Shooting accuracy and consistency is arguably one of the most crucial and most difficult skills in Rocket League. No matter how many hours you have, no matter what rank you are, there is always room for improvement when it comes to shooting. Even the absolute best players in the world can miss the easiest of shots. So a workshop map like this caters to literally every single person that plays this game. Plus, the green squares can appear from anywhere along the floor to anywhere along the ceiling. So it's not only helping with shooting at the goal, but also is helping with passing up field and just the accuracy of your hits in general. This workshop map has three difficulties. I suggest starting with easy to see how you find it, and if it isn't challenging enough for you, then I suggest going on normal difficulty. There is also a survival mode, but I don't personally suggest it. There are also mod options that include random target sizes, random wall distances, and random ball drops. When I use this map, I always select all three, because having a completely different shot to hit every round builds muscle memory and also gives you this game-like situation. This is why I prefer this workshop map to normal shooting training packs. These mod options prepare you with hundreds of different shooting or passing scenarios, whereas a training pack will only prepare you for maybe 10 or 20, and the chances of them happening in games is much smaller. Even doing this workshop map from 10 to 20 minutes a day can help your shooting feel so much more consistent. Okay, for map number 2, I have chosen Lethemir's Rings. Now this map probably doesn't even need an introduction. Rings maps have always been the most popular workshop maps. They look nice, and they're always fun to play no matter what level your mechanics are. Now, as you already know, Left's Rings focuses on aerial control. Aerial control is incredibly important in Rocket League. As a Grand Champion player, I spend around 30-40% to of my game in the air, so that just shows how crucial it is to have good aerial control. Even though it is not common to go for aerials at the lower ranks, once you hit around Platinum, you want a solid foundation for aerial control. This is so you are able to at least make aerial saves and score some aerial shots that you couldn't do normally. Left's Rings map has a huge dynamic of obstacles, twists and turns that you need to get through in order to finish the level, and every one of these levels is super fun and challenging, which makes it easy to spend hours just going through the level, and it's what I believe is the best way to learn air roll. Air roll is a very difficult mechanic to learn and it takes a lot of time, so it can be a drag to put so many hours into doing something that's boring. However, with Left's Rings, it was so fun, and I would sometimes spend up to 3 hours at a time in rings just trying to learn Aero. Lethemir has made a few different rings maps, and I personally like his medieval one. But that's just personal preference, they all do the job in challenging your aerial mechanics, so pick whichever one you want. However, if I was to critique Lethemir's rings map, the only downside they have is that they're a little too long. 
I like to say I have good aerial control, but these rings maps can take me from 15 to 20 minutes to finish, and that's after hundreds of hours putting into these maps. So as a sort of bonus map to give you, I would suggest you try Speed Jump Rings 3 by DMC. This map is a lot smaller, but can be a lot more challenging. There are rings of three different sizes and they are placed all around the map. There are also much sharper turns that will really give you aerial control the challenge. But with this map, it only takes me around 5 minutes to complete, so it is a much smaller map. Ok now map number 3 of the best workshop maps is Dribble 2 Overhaul. This was the first map I ever installed when I got Rocket League on my PC. If you haven't already seen what this map is, it focuses on dribbling. For the majority of the time it focuses on ground control, but there are a few levels that also focus on air dribbling. There are 30 levels for you to go through, with an increase in difficulty as you go along. The first level just asks you to dribble in a straight line, but towards the end of the map you need to do all sorts of jumps and sharp turns. This map took me hours to complete when I first started playing it. I would sometimes get stuck on a level, and it would take me hundreds of tries just to get it. Dribbling is an absolute necessity in Rocket League. Sometimes everyone looks at pros doing flip resets and ceiling shots and instantly try and replicate them. But being able to control the ball on top of your car is just as, if not more important to learn. Especially in ranked, being able to flick the ball however you want is just so important, and I think the lower ranks would benefit even more if they just put as much time into their flicks instead of doing these different types of aerials. If you think dribble 2 overhaul is a little too easy for you, for example towards the end of champion above, then I suggest you try Eversex's dribble challenge. This is an incredibly difficult map, and even now for me as a GC2, I'm still struggling to get past level 15. So if you really want to push yourself with your dribbling mechanics, then I highly suggest Eversex's Dribble Challenge. For the final map, I'm going to be showing you a fairly recent one. It's another map created by Lethemir, and I think this is one of the most underrated maps in terms of improving your mechanics. And that map is the Dacia Spring Electric Challenge. This map focuses on mechanics and skills that aren't really spoke about that much, and that is boost management, recovery mechanics, and being able to just keep momentum. The Dacia Challenge is a 20 level obstacle course where you have to grab all the checkpoints and get to the finish line. There are 4 difficulties depending on your rank, so I suggest you choose the right difficulty. You have limited boost, and each checkpoint that you get gives you a little bit more boost so you can complete the level. Now every 4th level is a timed level, so you will not be able to finish the level unless you complete it within the set time. Playing this map made me realise just how bad my boost management is. Considering I was finding the champion level pretty difficult, but as I started to play it more, I was able to complete the highest difficulty. Recovery mechanics and being able to keep momentum is a crucial skill that usually gets better with time. The better recovery mechanics you have, the more you can keep momentum, and the more you can keep momentum, the less boost you waste, and the faster you are as a player overall. By playing this training map, I have seen so much more improvement in my recoveries, and my movement overall just feels so much smoother. So I highly suggest you try this map out, because it just improves your gameplay as a whole. As a quick honourable mention, I would like to give a shout out to Air Dribble Corner. This is a workshop map that just focuses on air dribble control. This is the most difficult map I've ever played. I can barely get past level 4, and there are 24 different levels to play through. While I don't advise you need to be able to complete this map, being able to do the first 5-10 to 10 levels consistently will really level up your aerial mechanics. However, if your goal is to maybe become a freestyler, then I highly suggest you give this map a try. But a quick mention to tell you, every single one of these maps will be linked in the description below. These workshop maps have been a huge help for me as a player since I first got my PC a year ago. Practicing these every day has made my mechanics so much better. I wasn't able to learn air roll without the rings map, and I wasn't able to consistently air dribble without Eversex and air dribble gauntlet. The more I see improvements on my mechanics, the more motivated I get to train them even more. And it's just so much fun playing these workshop maps that I had to go and share them with you guys. And if you want me to give you a training routine that I use to practice my mechanics every day, then smash that like button and leave a comment saying that you want the training routine. And I would really appreciate it if you could press that subscription button, I'm really close to a thousand subs, so it would mean the world to me if you could just help me out. But that's all from me for now, see you guys later.